There is a second form of complex data object that is very common in Python. That's the object type known as dictionary. Lists are very ordered. We refer to the items in the list by numbers. Dictionaries are different because they are unordered data structures. You can tell the difference when a dictionary is defined by the fact that it's surrounded by curly brackets rather than square brackets. Because the dictionaries are unordered, we have to have some way to refer to the slots that are in dictionaries. Rather than identifying them by index numbers, instead we essentially give them names. The names are what we call keys. So each slot in the dictionary has an associated key that's used to identify it. So the way that we find an object in a dictionary is to essentially look it up by uh, referring to its key. In this example here, the keys are essentially identifiers. They're like catalog numbers. So we refer to a catalog number that allows us to look up the value of that particular dictionary item. Keys can also represent characteristics of the object. So for example, in this particular object, it represents a profile for something. And so the keys represent uh, characteristics or properties of the object, like the object's name, company, and so forth. We can also see that the values of the dictionary don't have to be strings. They can be any type in Python, including Booleans and numbers. However, the keys are always strings. Let's try experimenting a bit with some dictionaries. Here I have the two dictionaries that we saw in the example. Let's try uh, instantiating them and then referring to some of their items by their keys. So here we see item number 2149, which is flange. We were able to refer to that and we did see indeed flange. In the examples that I've shown so far, the key has been used in the form of a literal string. However, the, you can also use a string variable to represent the key as well. So for example, in this situation, we have assigned a string to a variable and then the variable is used to refer to the particular item in that dictionary. In this example, we don't even know what the correct key is going to be because we're going to allow the user to input it. So let's try that out. So here we can see the animated characters that got printed out. Let's try name. So it substituted in name and then looked up the profile with the key of name. Let's try another one. Character's fingers, eight. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, so one of the problems with dictionaries is if we ask for a key that doesn't exist, it will generate an error. And we'll find out a way to handle this in a future lesson. Just as we could create an empty list by putting square brackets with nothing between them, we can create an empty dictionary by putting curly brackets with nothing in between them. If we want to change the value in a dictionary, all we have to do is to simply assign the new value to the slot referred to by its key. This also works if we want to create a new value that doesn't already exist in the dictionary. All we have to do is just put in a key and it will create a new slot whose key is the one that we put in the square brackets. If we want to remove an item, we can do that with a delete command, similar to the way we could delete list items. In this case, however, we put a key in instead of an index. Creating an empty dictionary is actually kind of a good trick 
because then you can just simply add the items one at a time and the dictionary will expand to hold all the items that we put in. Um, in this particular case, we are hard coding into the code the items that we want to add, but it's possible, and we'll see how to do this in the future, to add an indefinite number of items to a dictionary. So being able, being able to create an empty dictionary and add items to it is more flexible than having to specify all of the items on the front end. So let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. So first, we're being asked the character name. Okay, and we can see that the name, key, and item have been added to the dictionary. Now it's asking who does Fred Flintstone work for. Now we see that it's added a second key value pair for the company. Number of fingers, 10. So we've now completely created the dictionary that we want. Now let's try uh, reassigning one of the catalog numbers to a different value. And also let's try deleting one of them. So first we'll print what the catalog items are in the beginning. You can see here they are same as before, but now item number 2149, which used to be flange, we are changing to thingamajig. And then we're deleting item 1008, which was widget. And we can see that it is no longer present in the dictionary.